And having spent the afternoon with you, Mike, I'm desperately confused about what you're actually I just like a good damage. game of football, Dave. I don't know what you're trying to insinuate here. He balls with the wind. <laughs> <laughs> for Arsenal next season. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have another look at that graphic, because this is going to need a little bit of sorting out, Micah. Come on, you have first dibs at this. Um, look, it's going to be difficult. If you look at Arsenal, you're looking at Newcastle away. Uh, I think they'll deal with Chelsea and, and Man City. We know Man City are playing Arsenal. Do you think they'll well, deal with the first two before they go to I, the Etihad? I think, I think uh, West Ham they'll deal with and Southampton they'll deal with. Man City is a big one, of course. I think they, they, they beat Chelsea with their form right now. But going to Newcastle is going to be tough. The way Newcastle play, everyone's expecting Newcastle to fall off and they keep going and going and going. They're brilliant to watch. But then if you go on Man City side, Brentford away. I know we're looking at... I'm going That's to the, the end. Day. I'm going to the That's Brentford the away and Brighton away. They're the away she games. Might go in that last. The big help for Arsenal that... might be the distractions for obviously Man City with the Champions League because the, the, them games physically and emotionally will take a lot out of them when you're playing against a big team. Obviously the cup, the FA Cup will take care of itself. But I think the Champions League could just take a little bit away if they get through to the quarter, the semis in the final. That that could be an advantage towards Arsenal. There's, there's no doubt it's a tougher running for Arsenal when you think of games that City could drop points in. I look at Everton away, it's notoriously a tough game for City, even when they, they win there, it's maybe by the odd goal, that could be a tough game with Everton fighting for the lives, tight pitch, the crowd, and also Brighton, I think Brighton are a, a super team, they're a tough game for anyone, they will take City on at their own game, but as Roy's just said there, the European games, you're not quite sure which one might be a Wednesday night and then you play, Saturday might be an early game, it might just be three o'clock Saturday and then it's a different kettle of fish in terms of you know turnaround time, and I do think that, because we keep talking about the title, City can do the treble. You know, the, the, the great chance of going to be in the FA Cup final, the, the favourites for the Champions League. And I think on the running for that, if they keep going, there will be one or two games, I think, where Pep Guardiola has got to think about winning the treble and he'll have to take a chance in a couple of league games in terms of the team he picks. And it might not be his best team. And he might think, I've just got to go with this one because I've got this game midweek. And this, the bigger picture, is almost too important than just one off league game. Well, you've been there. Won it. What does it take? I mean, we yeah, uh, a lot of luck, luck, endeavour, fighting spirit, quality. Obviously, I think the game that Pep could look at obviously is the, the FA Cup semi-final at Sheffield United at Wembley, where I think he could think that he might be able to rest. Well, he will rest players in that game, I'm sure. Not taking it lightly, but thinking he can win with the, the squad that he's got. But I, I agree with Jamie. I, you know, he's sneakily just moving along towards the treble, but there's a lot got to go his way. He's got Bayern Munich, Real Madrid or Chelsea to get past and then the final, and then you've got obviously got Arsenal in the league. It's, there's a lot to do. Um, still, There's a long way to go, but look, they're on for it. I think City have hit the... It feels to me now like Pep is... It sounds crazy, this, but it's really serious now. He's got the proper back four in place. He's got De Bruyne, Gundogan and Rodri in midfield. He's not rotating anymore with Rico Lewis coming into midfield or Bernardo Silva playing left back and coming into midfield. He's got Ake and Stones alongside Akanji and Diaz. So it's, it's all like really serious. He knows he can't make a mistake now because every game that you actually do make a mistake in costs you a, pro uh, the costs you a problem. The squad, the players off the bench, the players who've been maybe in the background a little bit who haven't done too much, they will make a huge difference. They did for us in with United 99, the lads who came off the bench who were brilliant, good squad players and took their chances when there was like players like myself suspended or injuries. So the, the, the squad really can get you over the line. But give us an insight into the mentality of the dressing room. When it gets to this point, with, with three competitions in the balance... The key, the key is you just focus on the next game. And also OK for the media and for all of us lads to look at the games coming up. But when you're in the dressing room and you're trying to win the big prizes and you're under the pressure and you listen, you're travelling big games, European games, you focus on the next game as a player. OK, the manager has to look at the bigger picture and start thinking maybe it can, t it can take a, a lesser team in a cup semi-final against a, a lesser team. But when we were in the zone, I don't remember one conversation we ever had beyond the next game. You couldn't. It's, it's, it's crazy. You can't do it. How do you deal with that pressure, though? Going for free competitions this part of the, the season. Well, well, for me, I always think when you're playing for a big club like Man United, you, the, the, the expectations you're expected to be competing at the end of the season for the big prizes. So, yeah, there's pressure there. But when you've got obviously a pretty decent manager, a good staff, and a brilliant squad, great support behind you, you think you've got a chance. But you need a bit of luck, a bit of luck along the way. We know, Micah, that Arsenal are desperate to win the Premier League title. It's been 19 years for City. It, 
it keeps coming for them, but the Champions League has remained elusive. Might that give Arsenal the edge when it comes to the crunch in the title race, do you think? Maybe, but I, I think, you know, being inside the city and, and knowing how they think, they've always talked about the league being the most important, and you can say I'm lying. I, I'm not lying, that's what they always, always said. The Champions League's a, a bonus. I think they don't like the way that everyone always talks about it, or Man City, they've, they've not won the Champions League, so of course... They've tried to win it every single time. They've been to a final and, and, and they've lost. Um, I think they're just going for, for everything. With the squad that they have, the quality they have, the manager that they have, they're going for absolutely every competition. And they won't get distracted because they've got top quality players. It's possible. It's going to be a fascinating few Yeah, weeks. I mean, the Champions League draw was a bit of a killer for them. It could have been mm. a lot easier. And even if they go through a Bayern Munich and, and you may be expected to be uh, Real Madrid, I think, uh, I think we all know playing at that level in those big games, physically and mentally what those games take out of you because you know they're going to go to the wire. You're not going to win any of those games easy. It's, it's going to be, you know, last 20 minutes of the second leg, it's going to be decisive whether you win or lose, the come down from it and that game you played the weekend, that could keep Arsenal, as I said, very hungry.